Greetings and welcome to Faith in an Ever-Changing World, Encouragement and Hope, Faith Story. I'm Janet Harley, your host, and I am pleased to announce that I have with me today David Michael Reardon. And David is an actor, and when he's not acting, he is the online church uh, pastor for his church. And so you can read a little bit more about him in the post. But welcome, welcome, everybody, and welcome to you, David. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor. <laughs> yes. And right after our short intro, we're going to be hearing David Michael Reardon's faith story. So stay with us right after this. And welcome back. And uh, David, if you will, please share your faith story with us. Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank you again for having me on. It's an honor. Um, as far as my faith-based story or my faith story, um, you know, I, I, I grew up in church, um, uh, was raised going to church and, you know, as a kid, often falling asleep in church. Um, but as I, got, <laughs> as I got older, I learned, you know, uh, <laughs> But the, the more trials that you go through, you know, that the more often you have to rely on God and, and mm -hmm. life has taught me a ton. Um, and God has taught me a ton through life. And one of the things that um, God had to take me through along with my family um, was we experienced over 30 deaths in the span of five years in our family. And yeah. it, it really taught me about the brevity of life and how important it is. And, um, how, you know, any of us can be gone at any moment. And, um, yeah. it, it got to the point where whenever we would get a phone call from a family member, it's like, you know, who is it this time? That kind of thing. Yeah. God's strength through that time and his, um, you know, it's the, the word says that he makes us lay down in green pastures. Uh, mm -hmm. sometimes we don't want to, but sometimes he makes us yeah. I think that him being there and him allowing me to, you know, go through that grief process and, and learn the lessons I needed to learn. Um, they drove me closer to him. And uh, mm. so then I began serving in my church uh, because I really felt like I needed to connect and um, begin taking that step to go deeper because I felt very surface level, very lukewarm. Mm -hmm. And the more I served, you know, from we had a stewardship team where basically we cleaned the bathrooms and, you know, the entire, you know, the sanctuary and everything. Right. Um, you know, we pray, we clean, afterwards we pray again. Mm -hmm. so, that eventually led me into, you know, serving on an online team and then becoming the online pastor. And through that, it has been so transformational. Um, and it's been something that has strengthened me so much uh, whenever I go to, into projects um, and into, you know, onto sets and onto films and right. television shows where it may not be a Christ-like environment, um, but Christ needs us there, you know? So yep. that's a, uh, it, through all of the trials and through everything that God took me through it, it's kind of one of those things where you look back on hindsight and you're like, Oh, that's, that's why I was there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I know that uh, God, he's always with us, but especially in those uh, times, uh, like you have said that uh, you, you just went through a time when your family had so many deaths over a period of time. And uh, you had um, mentioned uh, in your bio about your, your grandpa and your aunt, you mm -hmm. were closest to them. So uh, tell us a bit uh, about how, uh, you know, God got you through that time. Yeah, that was really tough. Um, so I was out of all of the 30 plus family members that passed away those were the two that I was by far the closest to my, yeah. my aunt um, is my mom's sister. And we, uh, we would always go on family vacations together. We'd go to my family's originally from Oklahoma. We'd go to Oklahoma every summer, every Christmas, every Thanksgiving. You know, <laughs> and it would always be our family, oh, yeah. your family, my grandma. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I built a, a, you know, really good relationship with my aunt. And um, that was my grandpa on that side as well. And so, you know, every holiday, every, you know, every vacation was spent there with them. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, my grandpa, one of the best men I've ever known in my life, you know, uh, the kindest man, the, one of the wisest men, you know, and there's one of those things where I was close to him, but I wasn't as close as what I would have liked to have been whenever he passed. Right. And his death sort of taught me about the importance of connecting with people and making sure that I take the time to, you know, try to glean whatever I can from every relationship that I have and then also pour mm-hmm. into people as much as I can. Mm-hmm. And then with my aunt, she died tragically. Um, it was not expected at all. With my grandpa, he he went in and out of remission with cancer for a very long time. So it was expected, you know. Right. Um, with my aunt, it was just like one day she was gone. And that was one of those things that, you know, shook me, shook my mom more than anybody because I was her sister. Um, but it, it, that also taught me about just how short life is and how yes. it can all be gone in a moment, you know. Um mm-hmm. And, you know, miss them dearly, know they're in a better place. Uh, but the lessons that that, that, that taught me was, was certainly invaluable. Yeah. You know, life is short no matter what age you are, mm-hmm. you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Nah, yeah. And we learned that over a period of time. Yeah. Well, now you are, um, you have, been, you are in, I see you see, I mean, I'm seeing you're running the bases strong yeah. there the t-shirt and uh i know that you are uh playing one of the the main and you said the antagonist roles right yes. I, I, uh, I, I, tell I, us a little bit about that yeah so i play cody garrison um he is essentially the movie is broken up into two age groups there's uh the main character is the coach um you know he's he's in that that adult group and they have their <laughs> own you know right. antagonist group and then his son is one of the other leads played by bridger trent a uh, fantastic guy a uh, great actor mm. but um I play essentially the antagonist to his character. And so we're both on the baseball team together, you know, um, Cody has got this alpha male complex and whenever the new guy, uh, Bridger's character comes in, he doesn't like it very much. So he's <laughs> little butt heads, but you know, but yeah. maybe, you know, time will tell if they, if, if they uh, reconcile that relationship. You just have right. To Right. Well, that sounds awesome. And I, I know that uh, we were talking earlier about uh, being on set and sometimes things can go awry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, but uh, I know that it was covered in a lot of prayer. Yeah. Um, you all had the prayer sessions and and uh, and also that. And that's always good to have uh prayer covering uh, the set and um, the scenes that you all are doing and the interactions and all that you're doing. That's uh, yeah. Anything else? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say it it was a faith based project, but um, not everybody on the project was, you know, a follower. And that's usually how it goes, you know, like you you want to make make a project where you have a great environment and you have people that believe the same way generally, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes that's not how it works. That's right. So, you know, we would hold these prayer meetings on the mound, usually hosted by Cameron Arnett. Love that guy. Yeah. He's so yes. anointed. Love um, Cameron, yes. Love him. So anointed. Oh. But, you know, and, and at first, you know, we had we had a big group of people and then, you know, it was a small group of people and it started to whittle down. But then as we encountered challenges throughout uh-huh. the, the film set, it's like people started coming back, you know. It's like people were like, oh, it, things are not going right today because we didn't pray. And, and right. so you know, it was really cool to see that, um, you know, people <laughs> essentially running back to Christ by running back to the mound. And by right. the end, of it, you know, we were praying as essentially an entire group, you know, save a few people um, on the mound every single day. And it was just it was so powerful and, and so amazing to see and, and really, really. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, there is one more question I have for you. Uh, and it is, is what is one thing you feel that we can do to hold on to our faith in this ever changing world? Um, well, there are, there are several things, I think. Um, but in terms of just focusing in on one, I would say making a habit of it. And, and as simple as that sounds, it's mm-hmm. so important. And as humans, we're creatures of habit, you know, you know yes, we usually wake up around the same time, we go to work mm-hmm. at the same time, we eat the same food, like we are creatures of habit. And so we are. We can establish a habit of 
holding on to faith whenever things go right if instead mm-hmm. of being like oh man like you know this why is this happening to me if we're like you know what i don't know what's going on but i know that god's in control if that's Absolutely. our first response everything else is going to fall into place that's yeah. something that god has has really really worked in on me um over the last few years you know and you know i'll just i'll just tell you like whenever a few years ago, you know, I've been, I'm 24. So I've been living on my own for about six years and about four years ago, you know, hit a, a really, really bad financial patch where I was like, I don't even know if I'll be able to, you know, live here. Yeah. Anymore. Like I bet you notice on the door, um, mm-hmm. you know, behind $1,500 and $500 yeah. for the rent. Right. So yeah. three months rent, three months electric. Ooh. I was just like, <laughs> well, God, if it if I, if it's gonna work, it's gonna be you. And sure enough, He did pull me through. It took a ton of work, um, but what it did is it taught me that no matter what circumstance I'm in, God is in control. And if yes. I if I allow Him to to do that, because He's not gonna force Himself on us. If if I allow Him to do what He does, everything is gonna take care of itself. And if we can get in the habit of that being our first response, you know, whether it be by doing a daily Bible study or getting surrounded by, you know, fellow believers or, you know, a combination of both, whatever we got to do to build that habit. I think that is absolutely essential. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I agree. I agree. And Jonathan Nicholas, he has uh, messaged us here or commented a great interview and he has blessings to you both. He says, (laughs) that's wonderful. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And um, uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you, David, for being my guest today. And let's pray for David uh, as he uh, praying that God will continue to open up uh, opportunities for him to use his talents for God's glory. Have faith and look up, friends, where our help comes from. Bye. Mm -hmm. God bless.